Good morning, children of God. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. I'm so blessed and privileged to have another opportunity to come and speak life to each and every one of you on this beautiful and marvelous day that the Lord has made. Uh, I want each of us to just take a moment of reflection to this gift. Thanks to God for allowing this moment that we are presently experiencing. And that's in spite of whatever you may be facing or going through. Your situation, as difficult as it may be, is not as bad as it could be. So just give thanks for that alone if you have no other reason to give thanks. Today I want to talk to you about follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. And the reason why I entitled as such is because many times I'm discovering that people are being frustrated because they're trying to live other people's dreams, other people's vision of what life should look like. Uh, here in America, a lot of times people had a saying, I want to live the American dream. And saints, that's even a falsehood. Because anytime you're trying to live something that is not destined for you, you're subject to live a life of disappointment, life of regret, a life of failure, and maybe even become bitter. So let's talk about following your own dreams. One of the things I've been uh, exploring lately, I see a lot of... Uh, Americans, black Americans that have moved to other countries, some to the continent of Africa, and they go there and they say they want to try to create a sense of community or oneness with the people. And one of the questions that come to my mind is that, you know, it's definitely difficult to go to another country, another culture who already have a sense of community and to say we want to create a sense of community, which America does not currently have in uh, predominantly the black community or African-American community, whichever way you classify certain sub societies in our country. But I want to say to you, children of God, <clears throat> those of you who are living here in America, from whatever socioeconomic or ethnic status you identify as, this truly is amazing how much your mind determines your destiny that is what you think is what you become and so if you're going to live up to anybody's dream it needs to become the dreams you set for yourself the thoughts you have for your life the type of life you desire to live, even if that's contrary to the popular culture. That's how you find peace and joy and happiness. If you define your joy, your peace, and your happiness based on the amount of possessions you have, or the type of possessions you have, or the amount of money or, re or resources you have, then your life is, is teetering on a very unstable foundation. For when those things disappear or become lack or scarce, then so does your peace and your joy and your fullness of life. And certainly, uh, God doesn't desire, it is not his will that we live such a unstable life that's based on outward circumstances that can change in an instant. But our foundation needs to be placed on something that's sure, something that's firm. Of course, Scripture tells us that Jesus is the rock, and he is the firm foundation. His word is the surest word of prophecy. That is, it's the, it's the words, it's the only source of words that will last from eternity to eternity. So you build your house upon a solid foundation, which is the word of God. So that's why it's important for us to have a good working knowledge of what the scriptures say. And one of the things I 
want to set straight for a lot of people who read the Bible. They'll read a certain passage of the Bible, usually taking it out of context and say, well, the Bible teaches this. Well, we have to understand, you know, the proper way to study the Bible or look at the Bible or read the Bible is that it's a collection of letters, some poetry, some history in the Old Testament, some law, some songs, but none of those books or letters are there as a teaching lesson for us in the 21st century. We may learn lessons from the letters, from the poetry, from the prophecies, from the law, but they were not intended as giving a life lesson in the academic sense. So we must understand that when we're reading the Bible, studying the Bible, or looking at different Bible verses, always want to make sure we understand it in the context, understanding who, what, when, where, why, and perhaps how that particular portion of scripture or that particular story or verse may apply to your life and understanding the background of what it meant to those in its contemporary sense. This helps us to get grounded on a firm foundation of truth. Because if your foundation is not solid, thanks to God, whatever you build upon, whatever you perceive to be true, will not be solid either. Relationships that's built on a foundation other than uh, genuine, authentic love and caring and commitment for each other will soon come to an end because the foundation for those things were not firmly in place. A lot of times people make decisions to do things with arterial motives or with the wrong motives, let's just say, in mind. They have a, a different or uh, expectation of what they would get out of the situation instead of what they can put into it. And when things get difficult or things don't go their way, then they're backpedaling. Now they're finding every excuse or, or words to justify why they want to change direction. And I want to say to each of you, children of God, don't live your life that way. Don't live your life based on any outward uh, influence, controlling your peace, your destiny, your happiness, your fulfillment in life. And you can only do that when you follow your dreams, not the American dream, not the vision that some prophet or prophetess said to you, not the words or the dreams of your pastors or any other person who may have a great and noble idea, but it's just not the ideal that's for you. And that's why we're having this conversation today. And so we have so much happening in our society and around the world, both good, bad, and ugly. A lot of times the bad things, the ugly things can drown out all the good and positive things that are happening. But there are indeed good and positive things happening in our world simultaneously. And we certainly don't forget those who are going through crises during this time either. Or part of living in peace is being in a place where you can uh, focus some of your energy on assisting others spiritually physically, emotionally, socially, or financially. That's a good place to be where you don't have to, uh, as the scripture says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because if you're in a position of giving, that means you've already received something and you have actually more than what you need at the present time. So this, this wholeness, this soundness, this completeness of life, where you live in joy and peace and purpose is the place where God wants us to be. And when we follow our dreams, that is not the things that you just look at and say, oh, I, I can dream of living in a house like this or driving a car like that. Um, it, those things are great as a motivational tool for some people. But a lot of times what it turns into it's just envy and jealousy. You want what someone else wants, not because it's what God wants for you, but because you want what they have so that you can be equal or compete with them. 
And that is certainly not the right motivation or should not be the motivation that we're striving for when we're living our dreams. Your dream doesn't have to be a Maserati. Your dream may be just having a bicycle, a car. Your dream doesn't have to be living in a, a 15 room mansion. You may just want to have a tiny house. So I find saints of God, you find true purpose, true meaningfulness, true joy, and true peace when your life is mirroring the dreams that you have, the dreams that bring you peace, serenity, tranquility, joy, peace, and favor in your life. I want you to experience it in every area of life, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. Follow the dreams that you have for each of these areas of your life. It is not beyond your reach. It is definitely within your grasp. If, if you have two or more people that you're in, on one accord with, then the burden or the task should be made easier when people are working together, plowing in the same direction. But if you have to go it alone, first of all, you're never alone because God is with you. But if you have to go along without any other human assistance, then you can still accomplish your dream. Because remember, your dream is the goal. And a lot of times it's difficult for people to work together because if you have five people as a part of a team, that you probably have five different dreams as a part of your team. And that means that every person must give up on their individual dream in order to accomplish a team dream. And that can be difficult for a lot of people to do. So sometimes that complicates the issue if you have uh, multiple people trying to accomplish one thing, if it's not something that each of them have in common. But you don't have that conflict when you're making individual decisions for your own self, where you're going to live, where you're going to work, what you spend your money on, how you spend your money, the type of clothing you wear or, or the light, whether you live in the city or in the country. Whatever your dream is, there's no one to judge your dream when you follow it. What happens a lot of time is that when people start sharing their dreams and then they start comparing their dreams to others. Listen, listen to what I'm saying here. A lot of times what causes conflict for others is when they share their dreams, they begin to compare their dreams to others. And depending on what other people's dreams are, in comparison to the dream that you have, you may feel inadequate or you may simply feel, I'm content. That's, you can rejoice in them succeeding in whatever their dream is, as well as you can be comfortable and content in fulfilling your dream. That's very important if you're going to find peace and serenity, tranquility, joy, peace, and favor in this life. And that is what I desire that each of you have. That is what God desires that each of us have. We, we take a brief look at, make note of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, where it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you a future, hope, and good success. Your future is not like everybody else's future around you. Things that provide hope for you is not the same thing that provide hope for every person around you. Your success won't look like everybody else's success. But God says he knows the plans that he have to bring you into your place of victory, prosperity, wholeness, success. In favor. The question is, are you in line with God's plan for your life? And so each of us, sometimes we may not be able to recognize it, but we're hearing technically the voice of God, maybe through a thought or an unction or a feeling or something that just comes to mind, but we don't fully understand how to yield to it. I remember going through the process of learning the voice of God, understanding how to surrender myself 
to the voice and the will of God. For God's plans are always best, saints of God. His plans are not always the most comfortable. His plans are not always the most popular. But God's plans are always best for your life. And so that's why I really want you to pray and ask God to help you to listen, to be sensitive to his voice, that you can not only hear, but, but obey his voice. Do whatever it is God is leading you to do and to avoid the things or be cautious or stop doing things that God says is contrary to his will for your life. Hallelujah. All this is a part of living your dream. Because the dream doesn't originate with you. Living up to your dream is the dream that God has imparted into you. Another text from the Old Testament says, Before I was in my mother's womb, God knew me. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Each and every one of you listening to my voice now. And God had a dream for you even before you were conceived in your mother's womb. It will be beneficial, helpful, and you will find so much joy, peace, and serenity in life when you inquire of God, what is your dream for me? Or what is the dream you have placed in me? Many of us have sensed it. We kind of know it, but we allow other things to tweak our dream or we get persuaded or influenced to kind of modify it or adjust it to fit in with other people. It's time to pause and halt that type of activity and thinking in order to get in line with God's perfect will for your life. And when you're walking in the perfect will of God, there may be things that can cause frustration, but your life is no longer frustrated because you're, you're, you're striving to do things contrary to God. It may be frustrated because first the enemy hates you walking in the will of God. And it may be frustrating because we have to break free of one to do things our way and necessarily want to be comfortable while we're doing it. Believe me, once you start walking in the will of God, following your dreams, you will learn to become comfortable in your quiet place of peace and stillness. I think about the uh, psalmist when he says, "For when the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. For he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still and quiet waters. He restores my soul, anoints my head with oil. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's the, that's the place where God wants each of us to dwell in, children of God. And we can accomplish that once we get our mind in line with God's will. Following the dreams that God has for us and our purpose. So that's even beyond a spiritual state or emotional state, even a financial state. So if you're looking to follow or find your place of wholeness, God is working with you. He's working in you. He's even working around you. For some, maybe even using this broadcast as another reminder to help you to say it's time for you to follow your dream. You follow other people's dreams. You follow other people's plans. Now it's time to follow your dream and God's plan for your life. And so even in a, in a physical societal sense, uh, if you're looking to find your place to live quietly, search, seek God, seek the resources that he make available to you and the resources that are already in your hand. Connect with other people uh, who have similar views and are humble enough to not think that whatever we have belongs to us. All of us are in a transitory state in this life. Nothing we have is permanent because we are not permanent. But we need to live, we must, and I pray that you desire to live a permanent impact on this earth, even beyond your time in the earth, children of God. 
And these are some of the things that you will be able to walk into as you follow your dream, not the dreams of others. You follow the vision that God has for you, not the vision that other people have for you, because that's going to be the place where you find your true joy, peace, serenity, tranquility. You experience joy, peace, and favor in your life. And that's my desire. It is certainly God's desire for you. And I pray that each of you will meditate upon these thoughts, these words that we shared with you today and walk into the plan, the perfect plan that God has for you. We try to share a lot of resources on our websites and social media pages for those who are looking for various ways to increase in any area of life. If there's a particular area of life that you're looking to follow or path or plan, feel free to send us a message. We'd love to try to point you in the right direction. But most importantly, seek God. Ask and you will receive. Seek, you'll find. Knock and I believe when God, you're in God's will, the door will be open for you. So children of God, continue to walk in favor, walk in faith, walk in victory, and walk with Christ as you live in the midst of this world, knowing that the peace, the strength, and the joy of the Lord is upon your life. God bless you.